Hi, I'm David Dinkle and I'm here with the Two Minute Tip Special Series. This particular one is losing my earnest money deposit. Now there's some things we do that are different than most people in terms of earnest money deposit, but I'm going to go right to the core of what's happening. If you read the real estate contracts that you're going to be entering into, the limit of your liability is your earnest money deposit. So we're going to cover what if my buyer doesn't come, what if my seller doesn't come to closing, so on and so forth. But let's talk about your earnest money deposit. Your contractual obligation is to close on the sale. During an inspection period, you can cancel your contract with no ill results. Now that means that it, during the inspection period, if you decide I can't sell it, listen to me, if you can't sell it because your buyer's list isn't large enough, you can't find a buyer, you overpaid for it, you simply cancel your contract. Now, what I found out is uh, one of the national gurus that happens to be a student of mine came to me and said, I have a problem. I've been online marketing as a guru and I'm doing very well, but I'm getting questions that I can't answer. I said, well, why are you asking me? Hire somebody that can answer them for you. He said, no, no, I'm trying to do these live webinar things and I can't answer the questions. Will you take me in as a student? And I said, felt sorry for the guy. And I said, yes, because if he continued, people were going to be spending money and never get anything for it. So people will spend money if people market extravagantly and you won't get anything for your money. So I took him in the system and uh, he was the first one of my students to lose an earnest, he lost two earnest money deposits. So he called me up one day and he said, I got a serious problem. And I said, what's that? He said, I lost two earnest money deposits. I said, why? What have you done wrong? He said, well, you know, I always thought that the days of, for the inspection were business days. And I said, uh, why did you think that? He said, I don't know. It was common sense. Well, common sense is not so common. They're not business days. They're calendar days. And what happened? He's throwing contracts around and instead of using what at that time we were using a $500 deposit, which we hold with one closing agent and use over and over again, he decided I'm going to go a tier above. I'm going to use a $2,500 deposit. And he did. So he put out two contracts, $2,500 each. He didn't have a strong enough buyer's list. He couldn't sell them. So he went to cancel, and the agent said to him, uh, by the way, you should have canceled two days ago. Now your earnest money deposit is hard. If you don't close, you lose it. So he lost two earnest money deposits. And people have said to me, how often do you lose earnest money deposits? Well, never if you do it right. But out of the thousands of contracts we've done and thousands of closings we've had, we've lost four. Now, I just told you about two of them, and hopefully he's telling his students uh, it's calendar days. Now, in our contracts, we put a clause in that says, by the way, it's in business days. What does that give us? Every week it gives us Saturday and Sunday, two extra days. But the other two that we lost were also with the same student. How come? For many, many years, HUD has been selling properties, and they were gold mines. They were just pick money out of the tree, so to speak. They used to have their own lock boxes where you had you can get a key, go around and look at the HUD houses, so on and so forth. Recently, a few years ago now, uh, HUD decided, you know, we're tired of these investors. We give them a 10-day inspection period. They turn it back to us. We have to resell it. We're going to put in a new rule. Now, they didn't change their documentation, but in midstream, while this particular student had two of them under contract, they decided that the rules should be like this. When you do a HUD property, there's two boxes to check. I'm going to live in the house and they check a year later to make sure you're still on title and that you've been living in the house, not renting it. And the second box is I'm an investor. Well, in the good old days, they didn't care. But nowadays, if you check I'm an investor, you've lost your earnest money deposit at the beginning. You still get a 10-day inspection, but what good is it if you've lost your earnest money deposit? So the way you have to look at HUD properties is my earnest money deposit is lost and I've got until the closing date to do the inspection and resale and so on. So, do you have to worry about your earnest money deposit? I'm going to say to you no, but if you mess up, so what? It's a cost of doing business. Move on. It's an excuse if that's what you're talking about. Now, I'm sure I've gone over two minutes, but I think I've given you some worthy information. We're going to go on to the next two-minute tip special series.